This episode is an odd one for me. On one hand, I don't like it nearly as much as other Season 2 episodes, but I still think it's good. And I have plenty to talk about, but I don't quite know how to talk about it. So I guess we can just start by summarizing the episode. We start with a flashback taking place shortly after Youngblood of Souls, and probably right after the flashback we see later in the series. The Doctor doesn't have any treatments available for Ida's curse, so they give Ida a physical reminder of her issues, which definitely won't cause any panic attacks or stress in her future. Ida then runs away because her mom has gone insane, saying she's gonna cut out a mythical curse. This thing entered her body through a red glow on some evil paper trapping the soul of a bird. I don't think it's something you can solve through a game of operation. Anyway, Ida trips on the portal, which I guess had just been in the ground in front of her house for centuries, and she takes it and goes to the human realm to escape her mom. We cut to the present where we get to see Ida's morning routine. She commits a homicide side, dies, replaces her tooth, shaves, grabs a chug jug, and actually changes clothes! After this, we see Luce, ugh, studying. This sinful behavior is interrupted by Loa facing the consequences of her actions, however. She then says this, That was horrible. How have you managed all these years? Which, I don't know why, but I find that line funny. Like, instead of saying, I can't believe I put you through this for so long. I am so sorry. She's just like, damn, your life sucks to be honest. Okay, future me talking, and I just want to say that I was incorrect, because she says she's sorry in, like, her next line. Oh well. Back to past me. Ida then gets visited by a Jehovah Witness. Ida then gets visited by her mother, and Ida, knowing that there's a child next to her that misses her mom a lot, as well as her sister who hasn't seen their mom in decades, does a responsible thing, and throws her mom into the sky! <laughs> Apparently, Ida has been visited annually to discuss her car's extended warranty, and has given up on giving into it. In typical fashion, however, Luce decides she should help out in the efforts to cure the curse. Gwen takes Luce to the Batcave, where she makes a good first impression by getting scammed. Meanwhile, Lilith, an intelligent, mature, and responsible adult, dumps all of her issues and insecurities onto an 8-year-old because her mom thought she dyed her hair. Hootie desperately tries to convince his friends that alcohol, I mean ice cream, isn't how you deal with your issues, but Lilith responds by becoming a bird. Or a bat something. Luce and Gwen then do some morally sound child abuse, but Luce realizes that everything here is a scam and tries to explain this to Gwen. However, given the fact that she's literally given up her time and money, she disagrees. This makes them argue, which reveals their ruse, causing Ida to find out that she got scammed by her mom who's getting scammed by a scammer. Ida turns into the owl beast, but her crankiness is ever so rudely interrupted by Lilith's temper tantrum. Gwendolyn uses the remaining beast that weren't killed by her daughter to scare off some local Discord users, join the Discord by the way. In town, Ida and Lilith have a kaiju battle battle, and Luce attempts to commit larceny. <laughs> Gwen comes in clutch with Vito's old drug stash and does something INSANE. She talks to her kids and apologizes. And that's pretty much it. Well, besides Lilith leaving and sending Hootie into a deep depression. But don't worry, we can be pen pals. BUT I CAN'T HOLD A PEN! This episode has a lot to dive into, though, so let's get into that. Let's start with the symbolism here. Obviously, I'm not the first to say this, and I probably won't be able to say it as well as other people have, but it's fairly clear to me that Ida's curse is a metaphor for mental illness and disabilities. And this episode shows us the lengths many parents go to try and help, often without knowing the negative impact they're having. And we do see more parallels to this allegory in other episodes, such as knocking on Hootie's door, showing us that the curse can be activated by flashing lights. This is a pretty easy comparison to epilepsy, and we even get to see Ida go into the curse's equivalent of a seizure. Back to this episode though, I like the inclusion of Ida not wanting new treatments. She's made do out of her bad situation and has created a livable life of habit that she's content with. She was dealt a very rough hand in her life, but she's found a way to coexist with it and be at peace. It also helps that she has good reason not to believe in these new treatments, since she firsthand saw her mom go from seeking out actual healthcare to being an anti-vaxxer. There's also the fact that since she is starting to get to the point where she's actually at peace with the curse, it makes sense that she could be hurt and annoyed at her mom insisting that this is a problem, and that it needs to be fixed. Now obviously the curse started when Lilith cursed Ida, but there's also the real world common root, that of negligence and overall home life issues. Which is what I want to talk about next before getting back into symbolism. This episode subtly gives a lot of things to think about, as well as potential context for past scenes. For example, in the beginning of season 1, Ida had no idea what a hug was. And while at first this could be assumed to be one of those things that just doesn't exist on the aisles, episode 3 shows us that kids like Gus and Willow know what a hug is. Now sure, this could be a weird continuity thing, or maybe I'm just looking into nothing, but assuming this was even slightly intentional or true, 
This has some serious ramifications on how we look at Edith's childhood. Just think, she doesn't know what a hug is. That is insane. Then there's Lilith referring to Gwendolyn's annual visits to Ida as regularly visiting. A single visit from their mother per year is considered frequent. I'm not the only one that thinks that's messed up, right? Now clearly Ida isn't exactly greeting her mother with open arms, but I still feel like this says something about their relationship. And while I joked about it earlier, Gwen's neglect of Lilith is important to acknowledge as well. Yes, all of this is Lilith's fault, unless you count Bella's manipulation into play. But that doesn't mean that she deserves total neglect. Did Ida need attention and help? Sure. But so did Lilith. It's not like Lilith was happy about any of her actions, and I can imagine that the guilt would have an enormous toil on her mental health. Couple this with being ignored so much that she doubts if her mom is proud of her or even how much she loves her, at least in comparison to Ida. Now I want to make it clear that I'm not saying that Gwen is an abusive or bad parent. She's not. Most of what I said here is speculating and almost all of it seems unintentional. Gwen, for all things considered, was doing her best in a tough and unfamiliar situation, and she does apologize while beginning to right her wrongs. And it's during this apology that not only addresses the negligence, but also draws further evidence into the allegory. Whether we want it or not, it's a part of you. And I love every part of you. Because like it or not, mental illnesses and disabilities aren't gonna go away. There are simply ways to live with them and to live with yourself. Which is how Ida was at the start of this episode. This was just Gwen's journey into realizing it as well as realizing the impact she's had on Lilith. If you would like to hear more about this topic from someone who might actually know what they're talking about, try checking out Toon Ruin's video. I'll put it in the card in the description, and I highly suggest you check it out. That's about all I have to say regarding this episode, though, so I'll see you in Through the Looking Glass Ruins.